Hello everyone, this is image 23 for the Intraoral Radiographic Interpretation Seminar course. In this video, we are going to review a single peripical radiograph of the mandibular left first molar region. This peripical radiograph was obtained to evaluate the mandibular left first molar. This area is asymptomatic. The first and the second molars have metallic crowns. A non-metallic crown is also present on the second premolar. There is a radiolucency extending from the mesial root of the first molar almost to the mesial root of the second molar. Superiorly, this radiolucency is at the middle third of the distal root. Because this tooth has a large crown with a defective posterior margin, maybe we can think of a pulpal exposure and consider a radicular cyst. This radiolucency is not circular, the way we expect to see a radicular cyst. Also, the pedial space of this tooth, at least on the mesial aspect of the distal root, is intact. Also, it seems that around the mesial root apex, there is pedial space. Also, the mesial root seems to be touching or superimposed over the premolar root. There is increased space between the roots of the first and second molar. So is the first molar displaced anteriorly? So what is this? Is this a radicular cyst? It would have been nice to see a previous periapical radiograph. But there is none. Also, we see a radiolucency superimposed over the mesial root. Lucky us, we have a CBCT scan to review this area. So this is the CBCT scan. This blue line represents the image on this window. On this axial view, if we scroll down to the area of the lesion, we see that the lesion is mostly on the lingual and distal and the tooth may be displaced slightly buccally. I'm scrolling on this window from mesial to distal. This is the mesial root of the first molar and I see a radiolucency. This radiolucency is on the buccal surface, all the buccal cortical plate is intact. This is the same radiolucency that we saw on the periapical radiograph. We can conclude that this is an external root resorption. This is the apex of the mesial root and the apical pedial space is slightly wide. The large lesion is not associated with the apex of this tooth. This is linear and on the lingual aspect and the tooth has been displaced towards the buccal cortical plate and same as we saw on the axial view. Further distally, this is a oval radiolucency. There is no expansion of the lingual cortical plate. Same as we saw on the axial view, no expansion on the lingual cortex. Going posteriorly, the lesion is also on the lingual aspect of the distal root. The distal root is also in contact with the buccal cortical plate. Again, this lesion does not appear to be arising from the apex of this tooth. Further distally, between the roots of the first and second molar, here is this lesion. This lesion has not disrupted the buccal cortex or the lingual cortical plate. So what we see here on this image, on the axial view, this lesion is rather linear without expanding the buccal cortical plate or the lingual cortical plate. So it's an oval appearance, not a circular. So what is this lesion? Obviously from these images, we can conclude that this is not a radicular cyst. This is a linear radiolucency, circular, sort of a pipe or a tunnel. And we can conclude that this is a odontogenic keratocyst. This area was asymptomatic. Coming back to the periapical radiograph. So this is the lesion, rather linear, not a circular. The roots of the first molar are displaced mesially and there is an external root resorption on the mesial root and we saw this is on the buccal surface of the mesial root. So what are the demographics of a odontogenic keratocyst? It's slightly more common in male. It can happen at any age, infancy to old age. 
but most of the cases are seen in the age range of 10 to 40 years. The location of the odontogenic keratosis are mostly in the mandible. They are in the posterior body of the mandible, mostly distal to the canines. Frequently we will see that these are superior to the alveolar canal. Sometimes these are associated with an unerupted tooth and may look like a dentigerous cyst. The border of the odontogenic keratocyst is often well defined, smooth and corticated. The large lesions may have multilocular appearance. The shape of an odontogenic keratocyst can be circular but it tends to grow along the length of the bone. And this is what we saw in our case. This lesion was rather elongated than a hydraulic circular shape. Often we see the tunnel shape and this is what we saw in our case. It did not expand the cortical plates so it can become fairly large. The lack of cortical expansion and the asymptomatic nature of the lesion may allow this lesion to grow for quite some time before it is detected. Internal content of this lesion is always radiolucent. The presence of keratin does not make this lesion radiopaque. Occasionally, you can see septa inside this lesion and may give the appearance of an amyloblastoma. The effects on adjacent structures, there's minimal cortical expansion in the body. There may be some expansion of the cortical plates in the ramus. It can displace or resorb a tooth, but less common than a dentigerous cyst. In our case, we saw mild anterior displacement of the molar, while there was not much expansion of the cortical plate. Thank you very much. Gracias. I'll see you again on a different interpretation video.